When it comes to 2019 horror movies, it seems like we're going to get a lot of horror movies with a psychopathic antagonist. With Ma and Intruder coming out this year, we also have Greta, which is the first to come out, and now I'm able to talk about it. And it was okay. Greta tells the tale of Frances, played by Chloe Grace Mortez, and she is a naive girl who is new to the city, and one day while she's on the subway train, she finds a discarded bag, a purse. She's unable to give it to Lost and Found because no one's there at night, and she's too good of a person to take the money and take its contents. So what she does is she finds out who it belongs to, and goes to bring it to them in person. The bag belongs to the title character Greta, played by Isabel Hoppert, and I'm probably pronouncing some of these last names wrong, I realize that. But Greta is this lonely French woman who all of her loved ones are of either past or are not no longer in the country. Now, Frances lost her mother, and she connects with this lost soul and forms a daughterly bond, and this relationship becomes almost like her new mother. But as this friendship is forming, Frances realizes that Greta might have placed these bags in all around the city in hope of getting someone that she can get attached to. Francis tries to break off this relationship, and Greta becomes a stalker, and now we've got a thriller movie. Or, yeah, it's horror thriller. There are a few things I really admire about this film. For one, I like the performance of Isabella Hopper... Hopper... How do we pronounce her last name? She has a very, very creepy, very cold, very weird performance in this movie for Greta, and I loved that performance. I do wish that she would have dialed back on the creepiness towards the beginning of the film, because I would have rather liked the film to really feel like this is a totally different genre, where it's like, oh, this is a drama about a girl finding this lost soul in an old woman, and they become this mother-daughterly bond. And I wish some of the creepiness that Greta has in those beginning moments was a little bit more subtle than it was in the movie, so I feel she could have dialed back on the creepiness and then have that big reveal and that big surprise once she starts doing the stalking. That would have made a really great film, and honestly, that's how the trailer plays it off, but I wish there was a little bit more surprise in the movie. But when it gets to the end, when she does do her creepy things, it is really damn creepy. It is disturbing. Her performance really makes this film. Unfortunately, the rest of the performances in this film are either lackluster or mediocre. I wouldn't say any of them are particularly bad, but unfortunately, Greta is easily the best and outshines all of them. I do like Chloe Grace Mortez as the main character, but... I've never really liked her shy performances as much as I liked her badass and uh, very confident performances, such as her as Hit Girl in Kick-Ass. But then again, maybe that's because that's the first role I ever saw her, and I like that she's trying to have range and be different from that, but I've never really bought into the shy, naive version or the shy, naive performances that she's done thus far. I do like that she tried, but I didn't buy her performance as much as the rest. But then again, she is probably the second best performance in this movie. Everyone else is either, again, bland or mediocre. And I also didn't like the roommate all that much. Our main character has a roommate in the film, and I have very mixed feelings with this character. This character... Granted, says a lot of the ro logical and reasonable things that try to talk our main character out of the stupid decisions that she makes in the film. So this roommate is voice of reason, but she's also kind of like the comic relief character 
and the way she delivers some of the advice is kind of annoying and almost comes off as uh, I'm not sure how to describe how it comes off because it doesn't come off like her being a dick and it doesn't come off like her being a know-it-all or a snob but there's something about how she delivers her advice in the movie that ultimately doesn't work as well for me plus her roommate is this sort of like popular girl slash hipster if that's a combination that makes sense there's there's something about her that I don't like her as a character that much but I will say I do like what the roommate does towards the end of the movie and that almost made me like the character overall I do like the camera work in this movie the cinematography is pretty interesting at times and there's a really nice color palette of like this bleak dark twisted side to the movie. Granted at times it feels very typical thriller but there's something solid about the cinematography in this film at least in my opinion. And I do like some of the twists and turns of this movie. This thriller does have some really interesting concepts. The stalker stuff is actually handled very well and when you get to the third act and what she does with our main character it is pretty damn terrifying and disturbing. Now I've touched on some of the things that I disliked about this movie, but I have a few more things that I have to say. For one, the music used for the jump scares is annoying, and it's not the jump scare itself that annoys me. It's, it's accompanied by your typical, like, sharp music to emphasize the jump scare and sometimes that's completely unnecessary especially for this movie the jump scare would have been fine without the music I feel now when it comes to the point of the movie where Greta kidnaps our main character I think that whole sequence could have been stretched out longer to emphasize just how long she keeps our main character trapped it doesn't initially say how long she is kidnapped, but it has to be pretty long because it's through a course of when our main character was supposed to be on vacation, plus more days after that. Weeks, maybe even months. But how the movie is paced, it feels like she's only kidnapped for a couple days at most. Again, I wish that the movie was paced a little slower at this moment, so we could really emphasize just how long she is trapped there, just how long she's pretty much manipulated and tortured and all the messed up things that happen. Also, our main character does make quite a few dumb decisions, and dumb decisions in horror movies is okay, especially if it makes sense that the character would make that decision, whether it because they clearly don't know they're in a horror movie and so they would act logically when even though logic probably doesn't work in some typical horror movies or certain types of horror. And it also makes sense when a character makes a dumb decision during a very stressful moment where they're being chased or something like that. But the dumb decisions in this movie that our main character makes feel a little bit out of character and just a little too dumb and too naive. There are a few moments where it really builds on cliches and a few moments where it strays away from cliches. And that's good and all, but there are times when it strays away from the cliche that it ultimately hurts the development of our main character. There's one breakaway from cliche in particular, and it's towards the end, and I don't want to give it away, but it doesn't allow our main character to fight for herself. It doesn't allow our character to grow from this experience of being trapped and kidnapped by a mad woman. You don't get that sort of final girl growth that most horror movies have. And I feel that cheats our main character and granted it, she's learned her lesson that, oh, don't, if you find strange bags, don't go and find the person and give it to them. But, or don't be trusting of people right away but it feels like how the movie is paced 
and how she is unable to actually fight at the end of the movie, it does really take away from her development and her ultimate character change. And so I feel that our main character wasn't a fully developed, fully fleshed out character by the end of the movie. But in the end, I'm going to give Greta three stars. So did you see Greta? What did you think about it? Go ahead and comment below. And if you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and check out my movie reviews or countdowns of this year, of previous years, of whatever. As always, this is Bruce Gifford and this was Just My Opinion.